Hi everyone. So you probably know all about events. You know, you have these events that get fired when you are clicking on your mouse button, when you're typing on your keyboard, when your page loads, all sorts of things. But did you know you also have events when CSS animations play? Well, surprise, they do. In this video, we're gonna look at what those events are and write a little bit of JavaScript to just get into the groove of listening to those events as part of our applications. Let's get started. So there are three events that are fired by your animations. One is the animation start, and that fires when your animation starts playing. You load your page, the animation is about to start playing, the animation start event fires. The second event is the animation iteration event. So if your animation is looping, if your animation is playing multiple times more than once, each time your animation restarts as part of the loop, the animation iteration event fires. And then the final event is animation end. And this event is fired when your animation stops running. When it says stops running, it doesn't mean that it stops running for that instance, it just stops running permanently. So if your animation is set to loop forever, the animation end event will never fire. But if your animation is set to loop, let's say, three or four times, after the last time, the animation end event will fire. Now, I know that's extremely boring, and I can't promise you what we're gonna do next is gonna be any more exciting, but let's look at a visualization of what all this stuff looks like. And here's a simple example. Each gray box is our animation running to completion. So one box means your animation starts and ends, it loops, iteration two, starts and ends, loops, iteration three. So the animation start event is at the very beginning of animation. It is the first event that fires before your animation starts doing anything. And then your animation iteration events, they kick off the beginning of each loop of your animation itself. So you don't see one in front of iteration one, but you will see the animation iteration events in front of iteration two and iteration three. And of course, animation end is fired at the very end. So kind of basically just putting some pictures or a picture next to all the words you saw in the previous slide. So now let's take, well, let's go one step further. Let's now look at the code and the things you need to write to take advantage of, of these events and what it all looks like. So I'm gonna show you a very simple example. So here I have an animation. It is a circle that is just moving right to left. It is defined very simply by this particular animation declaration right here. The three second animation that's currently set to loop forever. All right, and, this, and the key frames are slide in. And again, nothing exciting going on here. I'm just sliding the circle from the right hand side to the left hand side and adjusting the opacity a bit just to make it look a little bit cool. All right, so now we have an element and the element being animated is the, is the div element with an ID of blah. And if you want to listen to the events, the animation, start, iteration, and end, these events need to be listened to on the element that is actually being animated. So let's go ahead and start by first writing our script tags so that we can get some JavaScript in here. So script, let me go into the closing script tag right now itself. And let's get a hook into the element that's currently being animated, which is the element with the ID of blah. So I'm going to do var my element equals document dot query selector. And given that the ID is blah, the query selector syntax will look like this. Great. And now that we have our element, a hook into the element in JavaScript, it's time to listen to the events. And the way you listen to the events in, in JavaScript is by using the add event listener function. And the way you listen to the events for the animation events is actually no different. So let's go and do my, el my element dot add event listener. And the event I want to listen to first is called animation start. If I can spell it correctly, it's not animation. Oh yeah, that's correct. I did spell it correctly. Animation start. And let's call it function start as well. And don't care about the, the capturing so or bubbling, so false in that one. And let's go ahead and just copy this line several times so we have the event listening for the other two events that are currently not defined. So animation iteration and animation end. And let me also adjust, of course, the, the name of the event handler that will be called at this appropriate time. So I'll call this one update. I'll call this one just literally end. Okay, great. So now we have the event listener set up. All that remains is for us to actually write the event handlers that will react when the event is actually fired. And let's start with the easy one, animation start. Function start, and let me put an argument for the event arguments. And now we are ready to write some code that will get fired when the animation starts. So I'm gonna keep it very simple. I'm just gonna change the background color of our animation, of our, of our page actually, each time one of these events fires. So for start, I'm gonna just do document.body.com 
style, that background color. And I need to specify a color that I want to put in here. And I have some values specified right here. So I'm going to on pink. So I'm going to reload, I'm going to save the document, which is going to cause a reload of the page on the right hand side. Okay, saving it. And notice that now the page starts off at pink because the animation start event fires the moment my animation actually ends up going to life. All right, now we have two more events left, function update. And so this event is gonna fire each time the animation loops. So in this case, let me copy this whole line of code that I have earlier. And let's make this one, let's see, steel blue. All right, so right now, animation start event fires, animation is looping, and the beginning of the loop, the animation iteration event fires, which is why the steel blue color now kicks in. So the last one is going to be the one for animation end, the one that is going to get fired when our animation is done forever. So let's call this one, match it to the event handler here, which is just simply called end. And just like before, let's go ahead and give it a different background color. Now, the thing about this one though, right, is right now our animation is set to run forever. That means that no matter how long I wait, the animation end event will never fire as long as my animation loops. Let me fix that. Let me just say instead of running forever, it's gonna run exactly two times. All right, so this is the first time it runs. And right now it says the second and last time it's gonna be running. And once I've done that, notice that the animation stops running and the background color now goes to khaki. So there you have it in code a very quick overview of the animation start, animation iteration, and animation end events, and the code needed to listen to them. And with that, there's really not much more to, to say beyond this. You know, For the most part, if you've read my articles on the animation events, I've always complained about how not very useful they are. I mean, it's great that I can figure out when the animation starts and when it loops as part of an iteration or when it ends, but what I really want is the ability to know when an animation keyframe has actually run to completion. Now, so many things I time based on, you know, in the middle of the animation, this little thing happens, and I wanna have some JavaScript that coincides with it. That level of sophistication is basically what I'm looking for, and that is really not provided by the animation engine right here, which is why if you look at the number of cases of people using these events in the wild, it's actually very low. People actually write their own timing functions to kind of stay in sync kind of poorly with animations and see what could be made to work for their own needs, which are unfortunately not being satisfied by the default events that we have here. But, you know, can't complain. Something's better than nothing. And the nice thing about JavaScript is that you can always add your own functionality on top of it if what you are provided with doesn't quite suit your needs. All right, with that, if you want to learn more, go to coop.com, a whole boatload of articles on animations, JavaScript, just random web developer things. If you need any help, post in the forums at forum.crypto.com and you can find me on Twitter, on Facebook and YouTube. I'm all over the place. And of course, if you found this particular topic interesting, which is kind of bizarre because events are some of those boring things you can ever, ever learn about. But if you did find it interesting, I can guarantee you there are more interesting things in the, my book actually called Animation in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. It is available where, I guess most of us buy books these days or buy anything these days on amazon.com. You can find it in paperback and Kindle editions. All right guys, till next time.